Welcome to Williamsburg Welcome. My name is Patricia Rollinson and we are going to paint this wonderful oversized key. I love the idea of having a welcome banner that is got this whimsy by becoming this key. I love the checks. It goes with like that Williamsburg feel. Um, love the pineapple. Pineapples are synonymous with welcome. So um, and then this project is painting style. It is all dry brushed up here which means we didn't base coat and we didn't do a lot of floating which makes it a super user-friendly. Um, dry brush projects tend to paint up really, really quickly. The um, keys are available um, at Creative Arts Lifestyle in a variety of, a large variety of sizes and styles. So um, you can get this all the way down to ornament size, um, or you can paint it big, so you have a lot of choices. We're gonna go ahead and seal our wood on both sides to prevent any bowing and stuff like that. It's a long piece and moisture can cause things to happen with long pieces. So we'll just go ahead and brush away from our edges so that we don't get a bunch of junk going down the edges. And cute shortcut that um, we all need to know about is with the sponge, you just kind of map that on there. Then you can go right there on the edges and you can just get a, a little swipe of your sealer and then just swipe it on either side and you can have your edges done as well. And it also makes a really excellent applicator for, um, for the rest of the piece. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get it sealed and let it dry, and we'll get to painting. When you have a new bottle of paint, and I've got the, um, the two ounce size of the chalky paint from DecoArt, um, I've got a little pop top that has um, it's a bottle opener. And it has a little kind of edge on both sides of this little opener that you can catch into the plastic and it rips it. Makes it much easier. I've applied some um, all-purpose medium to um, multi-purpose sealer to the, the surfaces and then painted them and they'd be great little gifts for your fellow painters and stuff. So we're going to base the... Um, whoops. I've noticed that the chalky paints, when they come in, they need some shaking. So if your paints look thin, then give them a good shake. I'm going to base this all in um, carbon. Okay, and I forgot I'm going to be dry brushing. And dry brushing likes just a little bit of tooth and texture. And brushing or using a sponge and wiping it on um, tends to leave too smooth a surface. So I'm going to go ahead and just apply um, my paint with my roller. And as I get to the edge, I'll just scooch it off like that. Okay, and then you can see just a little bumpy um, texture, and that's what we want. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is talk to you about some brushes. Okay, it takes a very special brush to do the dry brush, and the definition of our dry brushing is that it leaves a dry, scratchy look. Okay, I've got a couple of filberts here. This is a filbert that is perfect for doing leaves and, um, and stroke work and stuff like that. It is cut evenly all the way to the tip and it has very little, it has taper right at the end, but very little taper from side to side, and it'll do just a snap perfect little leaf, okay? This is a brush that is um, also a filbert, so filbert is defined by being cut across the, um, of the top, but its bristles are softer, and I like to use this brush for doing really loose like hydrangeas and things like that, because it kind of sits down, and it'll kind of plop out just a little bit doesn't have really good spring, um, but it's perfect for doing a hydrangea. This is the one that we call Patty's Favorite Dry Brush, and it's actually um, an oval glaze brush. It is a filbert shape, and it is um, tapered, and I think you can see that it comes to a pretty good point there, and it's tapered from about halfway to the point. And it's very, like, um, bouncy, springy. When you, when, you, when you push down on it, it pushes back up at you. Okay, and that's super, super important. Okay, so what happens is, is that as, so with the filbert brush, as you stroke down on the project, the first bristles will hit the ground like your longer fingers, and then the next, and then the next. And then when you flip off to do the, the scratchy look, um, what happens is then they leave at different time frames. So then you end up with even scratchy looking paint. And it sounds a little bit weird, but that's, that's like how the technique goes. Loading the brush is a super important step, um, and it's super easy, but you've got to kind of trust. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to rinse my brush out, and then I'll pinch out all the water. And you can wash your brush as you go. Um, that's not a problem, just make sure you pinch out the water so you don't have a bunch of floating stuff. 
So I'm going to approach my puddle of paint right at the edge and pull it out and press. I'm pressing all the way flat on my brush and I'm going to pull it out a little at a time. I don't want to reach in and grab a whole bunch. I don't want to scoop. What I'm going to do is build a reservoir on top by pressing hard on the bottom. Okay. The more you have on the top, then the stronger your colors will be. When I first learned how to do this, I was not loading my brush generously enough. Okay, so we're just going to get that loaded, and I'm looking for a wad of paint across the top, and you can see that I haven't quite reached that yet. Load, 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 and I'm twisting my brush just a little bit to prevent what I call side um, saddlebags, which is the little deposit of paint on either side. And that's pretty darn even right there. And then the bottom is flat. You see there's no shine. Then on a flat paper towel, you always flick just to get the immediate paint off of that edge. Okay, and then I think I'll show you on paper because it's easier to see on white with this dark color. I'm going to approach my stroke with a reaching out, dragging across, and lifting up. Okay, so I want that. I want to see scratches. And it helps if you practice doing even strokes, just even texture going across. And what happens is you get layer upon layer of these things, of these strokes, and you can't actually see where things stop and start. And the very first time you can. And then the other important thing is we're going to be going dirty brush from one color to the next, which is going to make all of these colors just blend perfectly. So we'll start with the darkest and we'll work our way up. And I generally do dry brushing on a black or a dark surface. Okay, now I've talked quite a bit, so I'll refresh my paint. I'm going to make sure I don't have a side saddle bag. Okay, and then you always start with your, your dark color, and what's neat about that, oh, I've forgotten a line here. I'll get out my Ghost Writer, and this erases with um, water, the eraser, spit. And um, you, that way you don't end up with lines um, on your piece. So I'm going to turn my brush a little bit for this long first stroke. My brush at handle is straight up and down. And then I don't want to cover my lines. I want to go up to my lines, but don't want to cover them. Then I'll tweak my brush back the other way to get into those little cracks. And that's the very first step. Okay, so I'll go through and I will continue in all of this, the, um, the sections, and then I'll erase my lines. Okay, so the look is gonna be like this, and then I'm gonna get rid of my lines. If you feel like you haven't loaded your paintbrush enough, go ahead and just reload and do the, the color again. If you think something's not showing enough, you can reload and just repeat And So see how that's a little bit brighter. And you'll do that just a little bit less in from the edge. So if I want that reddish kind of deep color to be there, then I'll just repeat it. And what I love about this is, look how fast that is. It's just a couple little flicks. My hand is really relaxed when I'm doing this. I'm not torturing myself. Um, I tend not to have hand fatigue from painting when I do dry brushing. Um, and so what we're going to do, what, what dry brushing's benefit is, is that we are going to be base coating um, the black is our base coat and then we just highlight so we'll go from color to color just building a highlight and we won't have to go back and really shade very much we might do a couple glazes but that's it so it saves you steps of tracing and basing and and all of that and it's a lot of fun okay now I'm gonna let that dry and then I'll erase my lines Okay, so I'm going to move on to the next color. So, but I've had to wash my brush because it took a little time to dry and erase. But what I want to do in order to dirty brush is I want to dirty my paint, um, my brush with that original color. Just wipe it through, and then we'll go in and we'll load the next color. And what will happen is the mama paint and papa paint right there will make baby paint right here, and it'll be a different family member. Um, it'll have. Um, the same DNA coming from both parents, but it will be its own its own little mix of that. And that is what is helping, that's what will help the paint colors really get along well together and create um, not so much contrast issues that we might normally have. Okay, so 
With dry brushing, you want to start in the middle of your piece because that's where your paint is the brightest um, and you don't want bright over here. So we've got our paint on our brush and we want to just highlight through the centers and we really want to encourage that scratchiness. Turn your brush when you need to to get into the chisels. Okay. to get into the long points just turn your brush and be on its edge Okay, that's with all the layers done. I'm going to go through and go ahead and do it a second time. I'm not feeling like I'm having a light touch at all, but I think I want to close up some of my um, some of my black. So I'm going to make a little bit super long strokes and let that kind of feed off into the black on both sides. I'm not going to try like intentionally, but I think with a little bit of sloppy application of paint. I'll be able just to close those up just a teeny bit. It's really a good idea to erase your um, your white lines because it messes with your with your eye, and you tend to avoid the white lines when you're applying your color. Okay, now I'll wipe my brush. Just wipe it off right there, and we'll go into um, honey brown, which is the next color in the sequence. If your color doesn't make um, a enough of a difference, like if you if it's too bright or strong, which I suspect that is, because I wiped out like all my paint, then um, I'll just go ahead and pick up just a little bit more, almost like brush mixing. Okay, looking on our paper towel. Now we start in the middle and we do not go all the way out to the edge. Notice how we can't really tell where one color is starting or stopping. Okay, so that's like really forgiving. It's like the hair on your head. One hair isn't very thick, but when you layer a bunch of them, you can't even see through it. Okay, so we'll go over here and we'll feather in this way and then just lightly let it float out this way. So I'll just ever so softly fade it to the edge. As I load my paint, there's going to be less and less of the dark in my brush, so you might have to go and add just a little bit of that. So far it's not bugging me too much. And don't get too light where things go under things. We'll go pick up that color one more time and we'll apply one more time. Starting to cinch into the middle. This pineapple is not really big enough to do a whole lot of um, color avoidance. We're going to glaze just a little bit around that edge. We want to start appearing to be round this direction. Wow. 
wipe that color out and we'll go into Marigold. This is also a very, very bright color, so we might want to just stab back once and flick on our paper towel. I think I have a little saddlebag there. Okay, see how that's getting some roundness. It's almost got a little bit of a blurriness because of all the little hash strokes. Okay, and now into our very center. Don't want to let the really light colors go over into the really dark colors. Okay, nice and bright. And I might want to go back and give these guys right here just a little tickle of highlight. I'm looking just a little bit lonely, like I stopped one too early. Make them family members here. Okay, I like it. Okay, we're going to glaze with an angle shader with deep burgundy. The glaze, by definition, is a float that is real, um, real wet, so it's very sheer, and you want to use a sheer color as well. So we're going to glaze around the edges and down into the bottom. Let's see how that's already helping brighten up our little pineapple. straight across that bottom. Around the top. Okay, now it's a little bit warmer. We're going to take our marigold and go into a little bit of timeless. Wipe it off on a paper towel. And we're going to use sticky mesh. And we're just going to create a little pattern on our high areas. This adds whimsy, which is pure fun, I think. It's like a little bit of unexpected stuff. And you can come back and do this um, after when you get all the all the stuff going. And same thing, you want to want to fade out as you get away from the edge. Okay, as I'm getting ready to do my leaves, I'm going to get up on my bridge, which is a little um, platform that will allow me to get a little bit of distance above my project, and it allows me to navigate my palette and my the key. Since the key is kind of long, it's nice to have um, something to rest my hand on that's not on the key, making it fall off the table. Okay, so I'll we'll start with evergreen in our sequence. And I'm really thinking I might want to go the opposite way. Okay, not for these leaves that are set on top, but I think for these other guys, I think this is going to be a little bit easier for me. And now that I've changed that, I don't need my bridge. I'm just going to negotiate all the stuff laying on that end of my table. It's important that you do shape following strokes, so when the leaf starts curling that way, you start curling that way. And the reason I wanted to come out from the tip is because I want to sweep off of the end of the, the cutout shape. It's a very unusual thing or a new thing for me to do cutouts, and so you've got to navigate that it's a different kind of thing to do. Remember to get close to your edge, but don't paint on those um, those graphite lines or they'll be forever on your project and you'll have to work at getting them off. So we just get that initial coat on or initial two coats and then we go back and erase. Shape following. 
those lines are super duper important because they lead the eye and they tell a little story. For the leaves that are turned, it's really important to go ahead and you want um, your paint to come all the way to your edge on the top and then fade to the back and then you'll want, wherever they're on top, you'll want that to have all the way to the edge but not up to the leaf below it. So I want to stay away from things that are above and below but when it's the top leaf it gets to have that gets a little edging right there and that way it'll fill in the whole leaf. Alright so we'll dirty our brush and the next color we go into is forest green. Get that nice and juicy in there. Flat, flat, flat. If it's muddy on here it's going to be um, glommy on your brush so you make sure you're real flat right there and make sure you look for those saddlebags and wipe them off. Okay, so now we've got, um, let's see, I'm going to flip me around. Now we won't go quite as far in to the edge, or to the, the other leaves. When you actually lean in to do that little bit of base coating, you lose a lot of paint off your brush, so be aware of that. And if you feel like you're not being effective and it's not, um, not happening for you the way it needs to, then you don't have enough paint on your brush. If stuff just isn't working your way, get more paint on your brush. That's like the least like, obvious thing you'd ever think, knowing what you know about painting. But it's got to have that humped over bump on the top and then it's got to be completely flat on the bottom. And it's a fun, fun, fun technique. It's just a little bit different. And I adore not having to float all my my shading and and do all my base coats. I love love getting by without that. Okay, and then we're gonna shape following along that edge. Shape following. Alright, next we wipe off the brush and go into a little bit of mistletoe here. You can see that I needed to shake my mistletoe. Okay, we'll flick on our paper towel and then we'll highlight. So we'll start on our edges because our edges are going to be a little bit brighter and then we'll draw that in. Don't curl. Shape following but not curling. Okay, and that'll give us our highlights. Okay, and then we'll do some final highlighting with a little bit of the desert turquoise and sea breeze. With that green mixed in it as well, it's kind of a neat little color combination. Okay, get in the right direction. And just that little pop of color. This is where you get to clean things up by using your chisel edge or your brush. Okay, you don't want this to be too electric, but you don't want it to be too retired as well. Okay, and now I need to turn things around. Alright, I think I want to put a little bit of variegation or some different tones in my leaves. So I'll flick and let's see. Where would they be brighter green? Oh, I'm thinking that's going to be a suspiciously bright color. Just tickle, 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 just ever so much. I'm going to go with a little bit of the desert turquoise in that color. Okay, so where things are falling forward, I would say those would be brighter. See that just a little bit of pop does a good job. And I've got my paintbrush kind of chisel loaded. I don't have it fully loaded so that I can get right into that chisel area. And then I can even use the chisel edge to get that little striated look that the dry brushing is 
I guess, um, what dry brushing usually does. Flip it on, go to flip over. Yeah, I like that takes the blue tone down just a little bit while still allowing it to to be there. Okay, and then we'll chisel this one. Should be following. Can't go cross crossing our our directions there. And this guy's on top. Okay, we're going to add final little highlights with um, the mix of the desert turquoise and the sea breeze. And where we've got um, that lighter green, we could mix the sea breeze plus that lighter green and create just a whole new color. I really like the look of the sticky mesh. Um, it just adds interest into, like this is the leaves of a pineapple are not extremely interesting. And it just adds visual pop. <clears throat> and you could go into the dark. Let's go into the evergreen. And you could even go reverse um, and do dark instead of highlighting. Let me neutralize that color. So you could come up base. Maybe. Can you see it? can't really see it that much, but it does. It's a little bit of a low impact um, and it just adds that texture which is kind of fun yeah okay we're going to glaze the base with deep burgundy but i think i'm going to mix it with a little teeny bit of evergreen it can be a red but not a screaming red okay and so we'll go into our leaves here and there Just give them that little bit of a popping glaze. Getting that little bit of red back in there is um, going to tie um, our colors together. <clears throat> Pardon me. You notice I'm not being extremely careful or cautious about how I'm doing it. Just get the color there. Okay. Okay, we're going to do these background leaves, and they're just going to be in the same colors as the... Um, and stay out of your pineapple. Same colors as the these leaves up here, but don't make them quite as bright. Okay. Yeah, we're going to start the red on the apples with um, antique maroon, and we want to be shape following, and we're going to ignore the leaves. Drag it down all the way around that, that edge. We want to be right on the line, but not all the way down to our um, next line. Don't cross the line. You want to be shape following. So if it curves on this side, you want to curve to that side. Okay, but see how I didn't bring it all the way to that edge. And we'll go ahead and build these two on the outer edge. And 
and repeat on the others. Okay, then we'll go into deep burgundy. I'll red these puppies up just a little bit. finding myself drawing that deep burgundy all the way down. All right, so now we're going to go into um, Heritage Brick. Just a little bit. Be careful with the key. I noticed yesterday that um, some of my strokes on here lean just a little bit because I'm sitting off to the side. So make sure if you need to um, change the angle that you're painting or make sure you're aware of the angle that you're painting at um, and correct for that. So turn your piece quite a bit. All right, I'm going to take my um, Triple Threat Ghost Rider, which has a white ceramic lead, a gray ceramic lead, and a roller ball for tracing patterns that doesn't have any ink in it. So we would not believe how much more comfortable it is to trace your patterns with this roller ball and a great big padded grip. And it also has bonus um, eraser on the other end. So I'm going to use my Triple Threat because this erases with water um, varnish, like you won't end up with lines on your piece. And I'm going to give myself the little smiles. And I'm going to go ahead and float, um, if I can find the right brush. I'm loving, oops, I'm loving dirty brushes. Um, the short brights, I've got a little paint dried in there, are brilliant um, brushes for having nice little controlled floats. I'm going to take some black plus the antique maroon. And instead of working my way around these little smiles, I'm just going to float them back in. Okay, I've got my floated little smiles, and now I want to come back in with, I've got my dirty brush mixed with terra coral, and then we want to bring some highlights out. I'm going to glaze over this, um, the whole thing. Okay, so right up next to that smile, there's going to be a nice... That's where you get that like shine. Whoops, got to change my directions. And then <clears throat> coming in from the other direction, always flip on your paper towel. Nope, I got to come in at, from the top. Pardon me. I'm going to come in so that it can fade out and sweeps in. Sweeping in and then changing directions to go down the side. Okay, let's take a look and see how it's going to look glazed. Oops. Let's go ahead and maybe glaze with um, deep burgundy. Okay, so see how that changed it to a red apple. We still need to do a little bit of highlights, but I think that's that's going to work out. Okay, I made a little decision here that I'm going to do some dry rubbing on my apples. Just because I'm doing a dry brushing project doesn't mean everything has to be done with dry brushing. I think this is going to be easier for everybody. And so what I'm going to do is just rub on the mix of the Heritage Brick and the Terra Coral. I'm using the Crescent brushes and bring that right underneath the, the smile. Okay, 
okay, and we'll just remix. And you dry this all off. This is more like rouging, more than, um, this is going to get some shine over behind. And then I got that a little bit too, a little too much. Okay, and I'm looking for form right now to see if I like my form and my shape. I'll go more terra coral on this one. And now we'll go into just a little bit of terra coral plus coral shell. And we'll go on somebody that's dry. I'll just repeat that. I have to reflip this one. Okay, so now I've got form and that kind of thing. I don't know that I liked my um, wash of the deep burgundy. I think it's too red. I'm going to try um, antique maroon. Okay, so we just wash over. Yeah, and that makes it be um, in tone, kind of in keeping with our project, the colors. Wash over the top. And I think I will go ahead and glaze it just a little bit with deep burgundy, but we'll let that dry first. Okay, so now we'll go with deep burgundy and we'll do a little dry rub. Let me neutralize the red in my brush. I have to get a new one. Yep, gotta get a new brush. So that was coming out too pink, and I think it was gonna continue to stay pink. I wanted it to be red. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll take our deep burgundy and we'll go on the shadow side and sneak over with that color dry rubbing. And that'll just deepen that red ever so much. Kind of sneak it up towards the highlights. It's making a kind of really pretty effect. And now let's go ahead and highlight just a little bit more with our Terra coral, no, with the coral shell. Kind of ate them all up with my. A little bit more. Final shine. I've got to be real careful with this. I'm going to go um, terra coral plus coral shell. <clears throat> All right. All right, in keeping with our little theme here with the sticky mesh. We're going to go ahead and highlight with just um, coral shell. 
in our highlight area. There we go. Just a little teeny bit of that texture. Okay, our little apple stems are going to be milk chocolate. And then I'll highlight them with, um, uh, is it honey, honey brown. Try to break the plane of the leaves and stuff like that. So don't, don't be afraid of going out on your pineapple with your little stem. And same thing out here in the leaves. Just don't do it and make it look bad. Okay, and then dry brush with your round brush into just a little bit of honey brown. Okay, and we might even could go into just a little bit of timeless. Go into a little bit of timeless with those colors to get the top detail. And maybe just a teeny bit more highlight. Okay, okay. We're going to base coat those leaves with evergreen um, because we can't dry brush on top of what we've got in that color right there. So go ahead and base coat. All right, so we'll dry brush using our little round brush with forest green. And use pretty much the same sequence of greens. The technique is the same. Make sure you're fading and then we go into our um, mistletoe. Don't be afraid to leave some of that really cool texture that you get with the dry brushing. And I think let's skip to sea breeze. Over here I'll go sea breeze. Just a little bit. And it makes them pop up just a little bit more than these ones back here. All right, I've got black green on the key shaft, and then I'm going to slip slap with some plan plantation pine up the middle. Don't want it to be just so um, stiff, or it's just a base coat. And then I'm looking at my colors between here and there, and I'm thinking I need to bring some cool into that. So I'll slip slap as well, and I will not. Okay, we'll go into Plantation Pine plus a little bit of our um, sea breeze. Oh, wait, too big contrast. Yep, nope. Bring in some black green, damage control. <clears throat> got to be careful not to let the top of the key get away from the middle of the key. So I've gone into a little bit of Lighthouser Green. And I don't really like that, so I'm going to go back to... Okay, so it's a black green with a little plantation green. We've come up with this pattern, little pattern stencil sets. Um, we're adding to them so you can mix and match or you can just get the whole collection of them. And we've got these little stencil connector screw things um, that we've taken to putting these holes in all of our stencils going forward. Um, and so you can take this apart and remove you know, whichever stencil you want to use. Um, but it's a really neat way to organize your stencils because you could put like all your Halloween stencils together and then you'd know, like, this book of stencils, if you will, um, is my Halloween stencils, and then these are all my word stencils or whatever. And you could put them in chronological order instead of having them, you know, just every or which way. Um, so I'm going to use some of these little guys. And you can take them out of the book or not out of the book. And I'm just playing around right now to see which kind of patterns I want, and I'm having a hard time deciding. But um, super fun to have this many things to decide with. All right, we're going to dry rub 
on our banner with a little bit of heritage brick to brighten up that center area. And we'll mix a little bit of our um, terra coral in with that. You never want to dry rub on a wet surface because it'll um, grab the paint and then you'll dig a hole. I want this to not get as red as the apples. It's a supporting cast member and not um, a featured cast member. So I want to keep it a little bit lower. Okay, and I'm trying to decide if that's enough yet or not. Maybe a little bit more with just terra coral. Evenness there, but I think it'll be okay because um, I'm gonna have letters right over the top of it. Okay, I think that's plenty. Okay, we're gonna go into soft black and we'll shade our ribbon. <clears throat> Can't decide if we need to shade it above and below. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. I like to shade after I float or after I highlight because then your, your shade color can kind of glaze what you've highlighted. Okay, I'm going to stencil my lettering with Honey Brown. And I'm using a dome brush because the flat ones don't seem to get all the way to the edges of the brush or the stencil. And so I like the domes for that and I always wipe off on my paper towel a little bit to control bleeding. I'd rather do two really faint um, levels than to do one um, super strong and have it all bleed under and make a mess. Alright, we're going to go right up through the middle and do a highlight right through the middle of the stencil. And then what we can do is we can go into our honey and just kind of do right above where I've stenciled to kind of blend it above and below. Okay, and we'll take a peek. Ah, uh, that looks really good. And I think we'll go one more. Um, I've taken to not using the um, tacket over and over because um, sometimes on the MDF wood and stuff like that, it peels the, um, it, like I think they might have changed the um, strength of the, the stuff because it would peel the paint right off your project. So um, it used to work just perfectly and now I'm stuck using tape which I don't like as much, but I don't, I like it better than peeling my paint off. Okay, now we'll go into, um, let's see, go into black and thin it. And we'll go ahead and do our drop shading. I always seem to do my drop shading on the left. I'm in a drop shading rut. Okay, now we're going to go into our marigold, is it marigold? Yeah, marigold. And I think right in that area where we have the letters, I'm going to go ahead and do some little detail here. And that'll increase the boldness of it. Make sure you're keeping it straight. And 
just increase where we've got that. I want to put a little blue band on my um, on my border here on my banner, but I don't want to um, freehand it. Okay, I want to have it be perfectly, wonderfully, awesomely straight. So what I'm going to do, I actually think I'm going to drop it down below. I'm going to anchor this, and I'm going to use this stretchy tape. And you got to kind of pull real hard on the thicker stuff, but it provides more protection. And you can just create a nice, lovely taped on there. And there we go. And I'll tape both sides, top and bottom. Okay, we're going to use Seabreeze in my little um, round brush and give myself little checks. Okay, I added checks to this guy with the big check stencil. And then I'm going to go ahead and add the same checks down here. I think I'll do it cleanly that way. And just try to center it as much as you can. And I'm using um, Timeless. All right, we're going to go into, let's go into some Heritage Brick. And let's go ahead and do like a little cross hatchy and a highlight going down. From side to side. Then we'll go into a little bit of terra coral and mix and just increase. Just give us a little bit of texture to hold paint. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna do some stars going up and down. I don't know if I'm gonna like them as they lie. We'll see. We're going to paint some vining going down the leg, or the shaft here. So we'll start with our Raphael, and we'll just go ahead and give it its base. So base all of your lines. I think I'm going to want them to be a little bit more squirrely. So we'll squirrelify this one right here. Okay, and then next we'll go ahead and start plopping our leaves. I think I'm going to get a better brush for this. The, um, let's see, this is a Filbert stroke brush. This little guy will make the most perfect little leaves without even trying. And I like to make leaves in little clusters, and I don't have them in clusters here, so I think I'm going to clusterify them. possible. Okay, now we've got Hauser Medium Green. And we'll go back through and blot that brush just a little bit. Let's go back through and make it a little bit more highlight.
Okay, then we're going to go to just a little bit of our highlight um, in the Hauser light green and just skip dance some of that. I'm not trying to line all these lines up, I'm just kind of making them be um, like dappled lines. And we're going to do the same thing with our um, leaves. We'll have some layers of our leaves be uh, nice and bold, and we'll have some that will be not so much. So we'll let those be kind of background leaves. And we might need a mix of those two colors, the lights. Okay, I'm having to patch because I didn't make my shaft red enough for what I'm wanting. So I am going in with a little bit of deep burgundy plus a teeny bit of um, terra coral. And maybe just a little bit more terra coral. I'm going to red it up just a little bit and brighten it up just a little bit. and a little bit bolder. All right, I've got my bejeweled um, key, my bejeweled stencil. I'm going to attempt running some crackle or modeling paste through, this isn't crackle, and then painting it the color of the base and then dry brushing on top of it. I want something decorating this shaft and I don't know what yet, so I've tried leaves, I've tried vines. Not clear on what I'm going to end up with. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of shading um, with espresso on our checks. Just want to bring them down just a little bit on the edges, just to bring the eye in. That'll just kind of channel the eye straight down the piece and we'll spread that love around on all of the checked areas. Okay, we're going to highlight our gold bands with um, honey brown. We'll just dry rub those. I'll treat it just like it's got a little bit of texture there, um, like this is high and that's low. And we can go up a little bit with the dirty brush into our marigold, but not too much. Might want to go cocoa. Grab cocoa out here. Marigold might just be a little bit much. So a dirty brush into cocoa. I'm going to bring it up just a little bit. take our soft black, which might also be a little bit much. Let's, let's see what happens here. Yeah, that'll be nice. 
nice little shade on either side of the raised stuff. Make sure you do a nice sheer float. And you don't have to do it everywhere. I don't think that's going to be needed. And we'll add a little bit of cross hatching at the top with the yellow, with the marigold. Yeah. Maybe it's just a little bit of pick me up to read gold. <clears throat> Same thing on these little dudes. And then we'll shade on either side with soft black. Okay, on my green areas, we're going to dry rub with forest green in the middle. And I'll just kind of lift them out of the dark. And then this down here, I want to go ahead and treat this as if this is just a straight little line, and I'll float to shade that, give it a little dimension. This, um, doing the highlighting and stuff like this will give it a little bit like it's shaped and round. I wonder if we want to do this the same here, too. Give it a couple of levels. And then we'll go back up and we'll go into how's your medium green. Just repeat the highlight. Finally, um, let's go how's your medium plus the sea foam, sea breeze. I want to keep that um, teal kind of color going. And I got to do that one first. <clears throat> okay, I didn't like it all uh, separated, so I kind of merged them together. We're going to shade with um, black green. All right, I'm going to take milk chocolate, and I'm just going to dry brush down the center of the key just a little bit just to catch on a little bit of that texture whoops not so much okay and then we'll shade to either side with soft black okay my apples I'm gonna go ahead and shade them with a little bit of soft black just to encourage roundness. And I shaded just a little bit above the um, above the pineapple. You can shade for separation if you need to. We'll let it dry and see where we're getting. Okay, our final little step is to go with our um, with our little texture um, sticky mesh and give just a little bit of texture to the different areas. If you can see it. Okay, and you can bring in your teal colors into into some of your green areas. It just gives that little bit of dance, a little spice. And I don't think 
Let's see, let's go into a little Terra Coral. I don't know about this. Maybe just a little bit won't hurt. I have to tell you, this painting off to the side, I've definitely been leaning all my lines this way, so be real careful. I'm going to mix clear glass stain with my gold or brass powders. I got a little plug to hold there. I guess we'll just take the lid off and pour. Oops. Make sure you put your cap back on straight. I tend to get mine skewed a little bit. Okay, so we'll mix that with the gold powders. You can make this any strength you need. Um, and I'm going to spatter with this. So what I want to do is get my half inch white wonder and I'm going to thin this with water. Then I'll tap off my paper towel. Make a mess everywhere. I'll come up to this pineapple and give it a few spatters. Just gives it a little teeny bit of jazz. And then we'll go up into the top and do a sea breeze. Um, desert turquoise mix. Okay. And I think we'll call that done.